In this episode, I'm going to introduce the rule known as indirect proof, which I'll abbreviate as IP. And in indirect proof, you begin an indirect proof by assuming the logical opposite of what you seek to prove. You then show that that logically implies a contradiction, a statement of the form P and not P. And once you've shown that the assumption, which is the logical opposite of what you seek to prove, implies a contradiction, you then are justified in asserting the conclusion you originally sought to prove, which is the opposite of the assumption you made. So, I'm going to demonstrate <laughs> an example of an indirect proof from the history of mathematics. This proof first appears in a logic textbook, in one of Aristotle's logic textbooks. where Aristotle demonstrates the proof that the square root of 2 is irrational. So to use the indirect proof method to demonstrate that the square root of 2 is irrational, here's what we do. We start by making an assumption. The assumption is going to be the logical opposite of what we seek to prove. So we're going to assume the opposite of what we want to prove. We're going to assume that the square root of 2 is rational. Now, I don't think the square root of 2 is rational. I'm going to prove that it's not rational, that it's irrational, but I'm assuming the opposite of what I want to prove for the sake of the argument. Now, if the square root of 2 is a ratio number, a ratio of two integers, which is the definition of a rational number, then there must be some ratio, a over b, that's equal to the square root of 2, where a and b are two integers and they're mutually prime. That's the definition of a rational number. And if square root of 2 is indeed rational, there must be some ratio of two integers, a over b, that's equal to the square root of 2. Now, if I have an equality, and I perform the same mathematical operation on both sides of the equality, the result remains equal. So if I perform the same mathematical operation on both sides, what I get remains an equality. So I'm going to multiply each side by b, and I'll get a equals the square root of 2 times b. And if this was an equality, an equality so is this. Now, looking at this, a is equal to the square root of 2 times b. I'm going to perform the same mathematical operation on both sides and the result remain, will remain an equality. So I'm going to square each side this time. So a squared equals 2b squared. And that must be equal if that was equal, which must be equal if that was equal. Well, now it follows that a squared is an even number, because a squared is twice the number b squared. So 2 is one of the factors of a squared. And if 2 is a factor of a number, that number is e an even number. So now I know that a squared is even. But if a squared is even, a has to be even. Because in general, if x squared is an even number, x has to be an even number. Any factor of x squared is a factor of x. So now I know that a is even. Since a and b are mutually prime, it follows that if a is even, b must be odd. So now I've proven that b is odd and a is even from my initial, my initial assumption. Now since a is an even number, it must be twice some number, because every even number is twice some number. So let's let that number be c. So let's let a squared 
sorry, let's let A equal to C, where C is that number which, when multiplied by 2, equals A. So now I'm going to replace A with 2C in this equality, excuse me, in this equality here. So replacing A with 2C, I get 2C quantity squared equals 2B squared. And this is an equality. I'll multiply this out, so 4C squared equals 2B squared. Just multiplying this out. So let's divide each side of this equality in half. Dividing each side by 2, I get 2C squared equals B squared. Dividing by 2. Well, then it follows that b squared is even, because b squared is twice some number, the number c squared. So therefore, it follows that b squared is an even number. And if b squared is an even number, then b must be even. And so what I've shown is that if you assume the square root of 2 is a rational number, then a contradiction logically follows. And that shows that the assumption is contradictory, because if a, if a proposition logically implies a contradiction, the proposition must itself be contradictory. Only a contradiction can logically imply a contradiction. So this result, reaching a contradictory result, uh, b is odd, b is even, which is a contradiction. That shows the initial assumption is contradictory. If the initial assumption is contradictory, its opposite must be true, since the opposite of a contradiction is a statement that must be true. So the opposite of the assumption is the initial thing we wanted to prove that the square root of 2 is irrational. So the way this, are, this proof worked is we, we began by assuming the logical opposite of what we sought to prove. We then showed that that logically implied a contradiction, a statement and its contradictory. And that logically shows that the assumption must be false. And that shows that the opposite of the assumption, the statement we initially sought to prove, must be true. And so that's called an indirect proof because instead of directly proving the conclusion in a series of steps, we do it in an indirect or a roundabout way. First we make an assumption, the, the opposite of what we seek to prove. We, we show that that assumption must be contradictory, and so we get back to the initial conclusion we wanted to establish, so it's called indirect proof. Now, in logic, the, uh, this, this procedure is uh, used in the following way. In the middle of a proof, at the beginning of a proof, anywhere in a proof, the logic of this rule allows you to make an assumption that's the opposite of what you're trying to prove. If you can show that that assumption logically implies a contradiction, that establishes that the assumption is contradictory, and from that you're allowed to infer the opposite of your assumption, which is what you initially sought to prove. So we're going to do, in the next segment, an indirect proof in logic using the same procedure we just used. So that's it.